one of the other astral travels was when we were in um, a forest where it looks almost identical to the cover of the book. And we were walking hand in hand and there was like thousands of butterflies flying around us. And your first reaction or my first reaction was to kind of like swat it away. And as she said, mom, don't touch them. She was like, they're so beautiful and full of love. And she was like, I, I remember looking up and I said to her, why can't I see the sun? They say that it's always right over here. And when I looked up, I could see the sunlight coming through the canopy of the trees. But where we were at, it was just, it was just this peaceful feeling and it, it was just beautiful. It was just a forest filled with trees and we were walking through, you know, a bunch of leaves were on the ground and these butterflies were just all over. Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and in today's show we have Brenda Aller, the author of the book Bonded by Love. So she just released this book a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually the editor of this book and I thought it was a great book that really goes into some details about communicating with a deceased loved one. In this case, her daughter, Ashley, who crossed over suddenly in the year 2018. And in this book, we also have a lot of really interesting descriptions of the afterlife, including through, through Brenda's own experiences. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say hello to Brenda. So Brenda, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> doing pretty Back good. In the States. <laughs> let me just let me let me just find you in the um in the zoom because you disappeared oh there we are hey there okay great yeah I'm, as you know i'm back in the states i'm a little bit sleepy but uh i apologize in advance if i uh, say some random gobbledygook at some point because i'm passing out but i, I i'm here we'll do this <laughs> kind of just to get started from the beginning can you tell us about your experiences with your daughter and kind of how it all started um, I mean, I always had a belief in the afterlife. Um, I guess I leaned more towards the biblical sense of it from what I had learned in church. I was I'm Catholic. I don't attend church anymore. Um, Ashley was my only child, my daughter. She was 26, almost 27, and she was on her way home from work on January uh, 23rd, 2018, and she got into a car accident and uh, a head-on collision with another vehicle, and she crossed over. Um, so, I'm uh, sorry, I hate even saying that part. She, um, it was, in the beginning I saw shadows and things in the house, so the, but the house was so full with people that it was kind of hard to, to, to keep my mind on any one thing. I was just thinking about her. Um, but I would see shadows or movements, things out of the corner of my eye. Sometimes if I was just looking straight into the, into the air, I would see something sort of float by. I didn't know what it was. Um, I had stopped eating. I had stopped going anywhere, obviously. Um, she started to come through to me. I had gone back to work because I thought it was probably the best thing for me to do because I was at home thinking of things that weren't so good to do to myself. And um, she started to come through to me one evening. I had come home from work and Acasio, my partner, had made burgers and I sat down to eat a bite and I started crying. And that was probably the first thing that I had actually eaten. I was only drinking water. And um, I went outside onto the porch and I was in the middle of reading a, a book from a medium. And I can't remember who the, the book was because I read so many. And I started to hear her. I was standing on the side porch and I could hear her talking to me clearly. And I, I was answering her and I wasn't realizing that I was actually having a conversation with her where I, for a minute there, I almost thought she was sitting behind me. like She hadn't actually left. And when I went back into the, I, I, what I, one of the things I was saying was, um, how do I know I'm still going to be your mom? And by this point, I was pretty much hysterical. And she said to me, you're always going to be my mom. Um, you know, I need you to calm down. I need you to take care of yourself. I need you to get better. Uh, I'm not, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still with you. And then for a brief minute, I thought to myself, I think I'm losing my mind. And I went back inside the house. And I picked up the book that I had been reading and I came across a part in the book where the medium was talking to a parent in her audience. She was doing a show, a platform demonstration. And she said to the mom at the back of the room, um, she was the last one there, the mom and her, and her husband. And the medium went up to her. She said, and I, I just want to give you one message. She goes, I know that your daughter is on the other side because I can hear her and she's talking to me. And she wants you to know that you're always going to be her mom and that she's always right by your side. And so for a minute, 
I thought to myself, how could this be? Because Ashley literally just said this to me. How could it be that I just happened to read this part in the book after she just said this? And um, again, you know, I, I just continued to read books and, and thought that it was just my imagination. And then um, one of the things that she said to me was, I had gone into her room shortly after that in the, in the coming weeks after that, and I would try to meditate. I didn't know how to meditate, but I had read in a book about practicing where you concentrate on your breathing. Um, she came to me real quick and she said, and it was clear as day, she said, mom, I can't stay long, I'm going to a dance. And I was like, who's gonna be at the dance? I was half asleep. And so I said, who's gonna be at the dance? Um, you know, make, you know, and I said, she said, all the young kids. And I said, don't get home late. And she was like, she started laughing. She said, mom, there's no time here. And I said, don't put your drink down, pay attention to people who are around you. The same things you would normally tell your child when they're going out to, you know, someplace with friends. And she just laughed. And then I came out of it because I realized I was part, you know, partly asleep. And I came out of it and I was walking to my room and I thought, this is crazy. It's my imagination. I can't try to meditate when it's, you know, when it's too late like this. And so the next, and she, you know, she kind of followed me into the room still laughing. And she, and she said, you can hear me. It's not your imagination. The next day I went back in and this part I had left out of the book because her boyfriend who is still here on this side uh, took it pretty hard. Obviously they were together for four years and, um, he's continued to go downhill since everything happened. And he's, you know, he's just not doing good. And um, so she came into the room that night. And again, I was, it was late. I, was, I started to fall asleep in her chair. And she said, mom, oh my God. And I could feel her excitement. She's like, I met this really hot guy. And I'm like, what? And I was like, you know, who is he? You know, asking all these questions. But of course I was half asleep. I got up and I was said again, okay, I can't do this when it's too late. And then I was on Helping Parents Heal and Kat Bailey was doing a demonstration and I asked her if she would message me to, when she was done because I had some things I wanted to ask her about myself. And there was no time in between where she would have been able to check my Facebook or anything. She literally got done with the meeting and um, video messaged me through Facebook within seconds of ending the meeting. And when she came on, she said, are you, you know, she said, and I didn't ask her to connect, but she said, are you meditating? And I said, well, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I think so. And she said, you have to continue meditating. She said, well, before that, she had said, I know you have a child in the spirit world because you're in helping parents heal, but is it a daughter? And I said, yes. And then she explained Ashley to me clearly what she looked like, um, what she, you know, her personality. And she said to me, you have to continue to meditate. You have to promise Ashley that you're going to continue to meditate because you're one of the few who are going to hear her as clearly as you do. And then she started laughing. And I said, why are you laughing? And she goes, because Ashley wants to make sure I don't screw this part up. And she said her exact words were, mom, I met this really hot guy. And I was like, oh my God. And it was at that point that I realized that I really was hearing her. Um, and she went on to explain how, you know, how great this guy is and he treats her great and they go for walks and he, they have candlelight dinners together and he's just the best thing that's ever happened to her. And, um, and so after that, I just continued my practice of meditation where I, you know, there are some times where I'm not positive if I hear her, um, but she'll usually come through. She came through with a message during the experiment with Sonia Rinaldi too, and sort of answered one of those questions for me too. Um, so was the identity of this new boyfriend ever revealed or was it just somebody from that side? No, Kat told me it was somebody from that side and that I would find out eventually who it was. I still am not positive. I had Astral traveled one night to her room where I had told you about that. Um, that's in the book also where her and her friend were in her bedroom. It wasn't her bedroom from this side. It was a, a different, it was a totally different bedroom, different setup, different furniture. Um, and they both jumped up and he came over and shook my hand. And that's when I think I put that in the book where I was wearing like this ridiculous outfit that I don't know where it came from, but he, you know, he was laughing and he shook my hand and he left, but for the life of me, I can't remember what he looked like. Um, well, can you talk then a little bit about your astral experiences and how they coincide with these Claire audience experiences and also the mediumship? <laughs> so these all kind of link together, right? And then, um, well, how did these astral experiences start? What, what were they like? Um, the first time I had astral traveled would have been when I was in her bedroom because she was shocked too, because she jumped up and she was like, Oh my God, mom, what are you doing here? How did you get here? And I was standing there and then, you know, and I, and when he said, when her boyfriend shook my hand and said, nice outfit and walked out, I looked down at myself and then I was like, Oh my God, Ashley, what the hell am I wearing? And then suddenly I had regular clothes on. 
and she did say, she was laughing hysterical, and she goes, I have no idea, that must be something in your subconscious mind that you wanna wear, and I was like, I don't think so. Um, so I think I had contacted you after that because she had an outfit on that it was like the, the end of the, the visitation, my astral visit there, she, I said to her, it was like one of those velour outfits that they used to wear in the 90s, and I said to her, why did you cut the top of your outfit? And she goes, well, now it's ready for school, for college. And I, I remember I messaged you because that day I had gone to Costco after work. And when I went in, they had, a, and those velour outfits haven't been out since the 90s. And they had a whole table full of the velour outfits. And this one woman was holding up the exact blue color that Ashley had on. And then when I got home from Costco, her friend Maria put a picture up of four girls all wearing the velour outfits. And it said, you know, you're from the nineties when you wore this. And so I had contacted you that night. And that's when we were talking about the synchronicities and things that she was letting me know that I really was there. Um, one of the other, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say one of the other, I know there's times that I go there and I don't remember it. One of the other astral travels was when we were in um, a forest where it looks almost identical to the cover of the book. And we were walking hand in hand and there was like thousands of butterflies flying around us. And your first reaction or my first reaction was to kind of like swat it away. And as she said, mom, don't touch them. She was like, they're so beautiful and full of love. And she was like, I remember looking up and I said to her, why can't I see the sun? They say that it's always bright over here. And when I looked up, I could see the sunlight coming through the canopy of the trees. But where we were at, it was just, it was just this peaceful feeling. And it, it was just beautiful. It was just a forest filled with trees. And we were walking through, you know, a bunch of leaves were on the ground. And these butterflies were just all over. And do you still have astral experiences or were these kind of one-off episodes? Um, I do. I had one, um, of course, in the book I wrote about where there was a possible uh, chance, there was a chance that I was possibly um, pregnant years ago, and we weren't sure. And during Easter, we were, I was over there and I was in a kitchen that I didn't recognize. Ashley was standing behind me. I couldn't, um, I couldn't uh, see her, but I could hear her and she had her hands on my shoulders. And there was a little boy sitting across the table from me that was around 12. And I remember I said to Ashley, who is that? And she said, that's your son. And he was dying Easter eggs. Um, that was also something she confirmed during Sonia's um, recordings also, where uh, she did say, I watch your son. And um, sorry, go ahead. I see you want to say something. No, I, I, no, no, please continue. So, uh, yeah, she had said to Sonia, I watch your son which for where she said to me rather, which for me, if she had have said I'm with my brother, it wouldn't have made sense to me because she never had a brother on this side. So when she said, I watch your son, it made sense. And then I guess to verify it, when I was over there, it seems like I'm only over there for seconds when I wake up. Um, there's also a picture that I took of my bed, of Ashley's bedroom window from outside. And in the picture, you can see a little boy who looks there's a girl standing behind him and there's a little boy, which I didn't put that in the book. I just looked at the picture the other day. I had forgotten I took it because it was over a year ago. And there's a little boy in the picture by Ash, by where it looks like a girl is standing behind him. And he looks very similar to the boy that I saw on the other side when I was there that she said is your son, that is my son. Um, now I, want, most I, I want to jump in real quick. I want to ask about... Um, with helping parents heal, there's been a connection between your story and other members of helping parents heal, which I also sure. think is really important. And I know there was one in particular involving, um, well, one of the, uh, actually one of the members of this community, Brian's, Brian, Brian Smith. Mm -hmm. And do you think maybe you could touch on that a little bit? Yeah, that, well, I've been over there a couple of times, um, but the one night that I was meditating uh, I asked Ashley, do you know Shana? And Shana came right in and I could hear her. I could real, hear real her. quick. Let's back up. Who is Shana? Shana's Brian and Ty's daughter. Yes, correct. So as so people watching will know, Brian is, um, actually oh, yeah. we have, um, th uh, besides myself, we have three other admins for the main afterlife topics group. Brian is the original one along with me on the, on the group. And also, you know, so he's also in this patron group as well. And sometimes shows up. 
And so I've known him a long time and uh, his, his daughter transitioned. And he's also a, an admin of the Helping Parents Heal Facebook group. So anyway, um, so, what was, so what was the story, Brenda? Um, so I asked Ashley if she knew Shana and then suddenly I felt another presence and I could hear somebody else's voice that I knew to be Shana's voice. Um, I had never heard her, obviously, when she was here. I didn't know Brian until I joined the group, but I, I guess just instinctually I knew it was her. And um, she's very polite. She came in saying, hi, Miss Brenda. The One of the important things that she wanted me to get across was she kept telling her father, she wanted me to tell her father he needs to practice his golf swing. And so um, sometimes when they come through, or at least in the beginning, I didn't know, but they'll give me certain things that don't make a lot of sense to me. I didn't know anything about Brian, so I didn't want to message him and ask him these strange questions because I didn't know how he would take it. Um, you know, I wanted to ask him about the things she was telling me about her bedroom. She told me she was named after a family member um, because I told her I loved her name. Um, she said that uh, Ashley makes her go out jogging sometimes, which gets on her nerves because she doesn't really like to jog, but, you know, she goes with her to keep her company. Um, They've come to me before playing basketball and I could see their outfits and they were holding milkshakes. Um, I was on the other side one night where I was in a mall with the girls and I could see Ashley clearly, but when I looked to the side, there was a girl, I didn't recognize her from her side profile, but from what I've seen of Shana, I believe she, it was Shana. And we had gotten lost in the mall that night and they had taken me, uh, we had gotten a security guard to help us find our way out. And then of course the next day, I said to Ashley, how are you going to let me know that I was really there with you? I mean, we were in a mall. And the next day, my first patient at work came up to me and said, um, uh, you know, how long is this exam going to take? Because I have to hurry up and get to work. And I said, it shouldn't be long. And I said, do you work far from here? And she said, no, I just work at the mall. And so I was laughing because I knew at that point that was Ashley's way of letting me know that I was really with her over on the other side. And then I did actually, uh, I did message Brian. And I said to him, she's talking about your golf swing. And he had said that he used to play a lot of golf, but that he doesn't play as much anymore. I don't think, I think it's been a few years since he's been on the golf course. But he said the funny thing was that he had just told Ty that when he gets to the other side, he's going to be playing a lot of golf. And so I guess that's why Shana was saying he needs to practice his golf swing. So that was pretty amazing because that also gave me validation that I really, and he was also able to validate the things in her room that she was talking about, like stuffed animals and things like that. Yeah. And um, of course this answers the burning question about if there are, if there are mall cops in the afterlife and now, now we know the answer to that question. But, but, <laughs> he was um, really nice though. <laughs> but, um, but on, on, I guess on a, on a serious note, I mean, what's, what's special about your story is that you're able to, document all of these things and look for a piece together these kind of i guess you could say veridical details uh, things that you wouldn't know unless you know you put the pieces together like the golf swing and all of that is outlined in the book so i think it's really great from a like anecdotal evidence based perspective i think it's really great material i i want to ask a quick question actually this was um, something a patron was asking in the chat but i it occurred to me, you know, I think it's good to ask you right now, which is what are your, I guess, psychic abilities in the sense that you have a clairaudient ability, but does that mean that you can actually visibly see her or is it just in your mind's eye? Have you ever been able to like see her with your like normal waking eyes? And, um, I, and then you also can do the astral projection, mm -hmm. which I guess is, you know, as we know, it's really being there. So what is the extent of these abilities? I don't know. I mean, I wish I, I wish I did know. I think something opened up after Ashley crossed over. Um, I did have a, I was, I had a reading with a medium in the UK, but I was also going to him for some training. And uh, he, he had told me different things were going to happen as time went on, um, which, you know, haven't happened yet. But I mean, obviously there's no time on the other side. I know it right now I can hear them for the most part in my mind. Um, I've heard Ashley a couple of times out loud in the house. Um, she called her cat once uh, by its nickname, which that cat is now on the other side with her. Um, she called me mom once and she called me ma once really loud. And, um, um, but most of the time it's in my, it's, it's in my mind when I hear her, which of course that always leaves room for doubt because I wonder if I'm really hearing her. So that's why I have the readings with the mediums when I do. And I, I never, let them know what has happened because I want to see what they're going to say. And there seems, um, to be, there seems to be kind of a difference between hearing something in your mind's, mind's ears, I guess, or 
audibly hearing a, a vocal manifestation or having an astral experience, right? So I know, I know what you mean when you can get the, in, kind of the input coming into your mind of someone talking or information, but it's also easy to second guess if that's really happening. But you now have all these other channels to verify these different communication methods, right? So you also, if you've had the kind of clairaudient experiences, actually hearing her voice, correct? And you've also mm -hmm. had the astral experiences, then you get the mediumship experiences. And so all of that kind of combines together, is that right? Yeah, I saw her once with my physical eyes, um, I was, I sat down on the couch to do a meeting with helping parents heal and out of my peripheral vision, she sat down on the couch next to me and she laid her head on my shoulder, which I would have probably doubted it. I had just had a reading prior to that with a medium and a different medium. I always try to go to somebody different because I don't want them to remember possibly that they had already gave me a reading. Um, so the medium had said to me, Ashley saying she met Maria and it didn't make any sense to me because I didn't know anybody named Maria. And um, so a couple of days later, she said, it'll come to you, just keep it with you and it'll come to you. So a couple of days later, I sat down to do the meeting with Helping Parents Heal and I saw her sit down to the side of me. Acasio had come back in from the kitchen and he went into the living room and sat down. And right when he sat down, I saw his mother, clear as day, sit in front of him on the couch. I was able to explain her outfit all the way down to her shoes. The only difference was that I hadn't seen her in over 20 years. And um, she, her hair was gray. And when I saw her, her hair was black. And so I said to him, your mother's here. And he was like, what? And I was like, your, your mom's here. I can see her. And Ashley's here too. And he said, can you still see her? And I said, no, it literally lasted for a couple of seconds, but I explained exactly what she had on. And then I told him the only difference was is that your mom didn't have gray hair. And I said, and her hair was black. And, and, but, but when I saw her, it was gray. And he said, no, my mom's hair had gone completely gray when she was taking care of my father. Uh, I guess she, either her hair went gray naturally or she stopped dying it. I'm not sure. So that would have made sense. But the, the vision of them only lasted seconds and then it was gone. So I want to actually skip now and talk a little bit about the work done with Sonia Rinaldi. And so of course, people watching, we've had Sonia on as a guest here on this show before. I think a lot of people know about her work. You've had a lot of verifications with Sonia Rinaldi. You've also had experiences of communication with Ashley, learning more about how that process works, being taken to the research station. And then there was all the all the really interesting stuff involving Oscar Wilde, the, the, 19, the, uh, the uh, late 19th century playwright whom I spoke about uh, a few videos back, kind of mm. giving a preview about your book and that whole experience. And then I identified that picture of Oscar Wilde in one of Sonny Rinaldi's unidentified image collections, correct? And then um, we were able to determine, well, this was, this was Oscar Wilde corresponding to your experiences involving Oscar Wilde that nobody else really knew about. And then you came in through Sonia Rinaldi's equipment, which was really, really interesting. So people watching, if you want to hear that full story, just go back on, uh, on this YouTube channel, go back uh, a dozen episodes. And I have that one up there. But, um, but other than that, though, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you got involved with um, Rinaldi and then some of the images that began coming through. And then I'll try to put some of those images up on the screen for people to look at who are watching this. Okay. Um, I had asked Ashley if she would, when I heard what Sonia could do, I had, and I also had at the same time, around the same time, had heard about Scott Milligan. So I asked Ashley, could she please um, some, find some way to go to Sonia's station and take pictures so that I could see her? And Ashley said, if you can meet Sonia, you know, if you can get in touch with Sonia, I'll come through. And I thought, well, how am I going to do that? She's in Brazil. I had emailed her. Also at that same time, which I didn't realize, which you and I spoke privately about, but I don't think I had put it in the book. I had started reading a book in the beginning that I didn't realize was written by you, Cyrus. And then I saw you post a video. And in the video, you were talking about all these things that people can do in the astral and that you were tired of the lies that were being told and that, you know, we don't have bodies and we just float around like balls of light and things like that. Um, so somebody had shared the video and I saw it and I watched it and I, I was like, oh, that was interesting. And then you did another one where it said something about we can have sex in the astral. And I thought, this guy's crazy. I didn't even know who you were at that point. I didn't put uh -huh. two and two together and realized that it was the same person. And so I ended up joining your group at that point. And um, then a, a, probably a year after joining your group, I realized that your book was one of the first ones that I had read and I never even realized. And then we found out, I ended up finding out that you know Sonia. 
So you emailed Sonia for us. She did say, let's see what happens, but not a lot came out of it after that. Um, I came home from work one day. I left work early because in the beginning, I really wasn't able to do a full day of work. And I came home and as soon as I went onto Facebook, um, Sandra Champlain had a thing that she had put down that she was going to be doing a conference for the first time in Boston and Sonia Rinaldi and um, Scott Milligan were going to be her guests. So I messaged her and I thought this can't be a coincidence. They're both going to be there. Scott's from the UK and Sonia's from Brazil. And so she messaged me back and I secured my spot. And then I just had to make sure I could get the time off from work, which is sometimes impossible to do because my boss is not always very accommodating. Uh, but I was able to go. Um, Ashley was one of the few who came through in the seance. I had never been to a seance before. Um, so she was one of the few who came through. And um, actually, she was other, there was two other ones that tried to get through. But she's the only one who came through the voice box and spoke besides uh, Daniel, which is Scott's guy, I guess control you would call him. Um, and Daniel did explain at the end that he said, you know, I'm sorry for those, for others who were here, but I really, this one really needed to get through for her mom. And um, so I went to go talk to Sonia the next day and I asked her, would there be any way if she could get in touch with Ashley? And we decided that we would do an experiment when I got back home and she was back in Brazil. So we did. And uh, we had to have like bubble wrap and different things, shiny paper, almost like wrapping paper. I had to have a red light. Um, the room had to be darkened out where I was as much as possible so no sunlight could come through. And then she, I had a list of questions that I had to add, that I was able to ask Ashley. And I was also with my friend Brandon. Brandon at that time was helping Sonia out with her, um, with her, her, I guess her website. He's no longer, I don't think he's any, I don't think he's working with her anymore, but he was helping her at that point. So Brandon was here also. I met Brandon in Boston. And um, <clears throat> he only lives about an hour away from me in New York. So she started to get pictures of Ashley. She actually started getting pictures of Ashley before we even did the interview, um, before we even did the experiment. She had sent me pictures one day and she said, I need to confirm if this is Ashley. And I said to her, yes, that's her. And I sent her back a picture of Ashley and it looked exactly like the picture that she had gotten. So she explained to me that sometimes they'll come through where they look like they did in a picture that I would have here. And sometimes they'll come through in a picture that I may not even be familiar with. It might just be a picture of her on the other side and that she, you know, and something new. Um, but she came through in a number of different audio tapes, recordings, and which Sonia published in one of her, um, her, her e-mags that she does. And then she also came through in a bunch of different pictures. And then you had some interesting personal experiences where I think Ashley was showing you or verifying that she had reached out to Sonia from her side and that she was taken to this station. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. When she, when, when she, I don't know if she was, I guess she was showing me almost a memory when she was showing me that she had gone to the station. I asked her if her grandfather went with her and she said, yes. And I was able to almost see um, this auto. I don't, I don't even want to call it an automobile because it was kind of like, it was almost like, something I've never seen here. And it's not, it doesn't look like a spaceship that you would see in some of the movies. It kind of looked like a bus, but it was like smaller, but it was more sleek looking and the windows were kind of like slanted. And I could see her going up in elevation on this thing. It almost looked like it would be like on a, like on a tram track or whatever you would call those, where it would elevate up towards the, up in the air. And I asked her, I said, are there, were there aliens there? Were you scared of the, you know, have you met aliens? And she said, yeah. And she was laughing. And then I said, were you scared? And she goes, no, mom, there's good and bad in every race. And she was like, the ones that helped Sonia and helped me are very nice. So, and she said also that she, her grandfather, I was able to see that Abraham was there, but on the audios from Sonia's recording from our experiment, I asked her if Abraham was with her and she did say yes. And it's also a good balanced perspective. I mean, there's good and bad in the universe. And even with ETs, I mean, you can, we have to kind of like when we look at humans here on this side, I mean, we can't say everyone's good. We can't say everyone's bad. But on that side, it seems like there's this intermix often of human souls, ETs, all kinds of things that you wouldn't see or recognize here. And so that, that's yeah. an interesting tidbit. So I kind of want to ask you now, almost, almost a little bit of like an epilogue since you've written the book. How are things going for you these days? Because I haven't actually gotten any updates about how things are now. Do you, do, do you still communicate often? Has anything else interesting happened that you want to share or talk about? Uh, I know I was there the other day. It was kind of a weird astral visit. We were in her car and um, 
she was driving a bit fast. And I remember it was so clear because the, the, the road that we were on went up on a slant like this. It was like a bend in the road. And then there was like a slant into some, but there was like a fence there, like a wooden fence and there was mulch and the mulch was so clear to me for some reason, but she, she was putting makeup on while she was driving, which is probably something she did when she was here. But I never, I very seldom was ever in the car with her. So she was driving and putting on makeup and she went up onto this curb and she I looked out of the window and I could see the mulch so clear. And I said to her, Ashley, do I need to remind you that you had a car accident where you almost died? And she was like, I'm so sorry, mom. I'm so sorry. And then we ended up showing up at this, again, like a mall. It wasn't, it was, this time I was on the outside of the mall in the beginning. So I don't remember what it looked like, but um, I, I remember going through like a department where they sell perfume and things. And she must have been going through this area where it's only open to employees because when we got through to the other side, there was these two women there that were straightening up and cleaning. And she said, uh, why did you come through this way? And I said, well, I, I came with her. She told me to go this way. And she said, who is Ashley to you? And I said, she's my daughter. And they said, oh, they were like, well, you're lucky that we love Ashley so much. She's such a good person. Go ahead, keep going. And they were like laughing with us. So we got through to the other side. Ashley said she would be right back. And when she came out of, I guess, their version of a locker room, there was these two women that were there. They were talking to me about my sweater that I had on. And I remember the one taking her credit card out. And th that's where it was a little weird. She took her credit card out and she did ask me if she could buy the sweater from me. And I said, you want to buy the sweater that I'm wearing? And she said, yeah. She goes, it's so funny. She and they were speaking Spanish. And I spoke to them in Spanish. And they said to me, we just met you and we're already asking if we can buy your clothes off of you. And I was like, yeah, that's, I didn't, I mean, I guess over there, I didn't think it was strange. When I woke up, I thought the whole thing was a little strange, but Ashley came back out and she was wrapped in a towel and she had her hair in a towel. Like she had just come out of the shower. So I don't know. I don't know if it was like my mind coming into part of it, or I definitely know the car part was, was real. Like it, it just felt, so real i can't even explain it well the trick there is if you cut if you have to come out of a lucid awareness a real experience can start to intermingle with a dream experience and this is very similar to when you um let's say you have a family member who's falling asleep watching tv and they're half asleep and they're mumbling nonsense like first you're having a coherent conversation with them but as they become less lucid in this reality like they start talking about like um like uh chickens and and ducks and you know, a bunch of nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of the same thing, right? So when you're having an astral experience, if you begin to lose that lucid awareness, then sometimes you start to dip into something else, right? And then, and then you have to like come back to your senses and be like, okay, what, what, what was really going on, and what was my mind poking holes in that? And I guess that's the skill of astral projection is you know gaining that lucid awareness and keeping that as long as you can. Um, but anyway, with that said, though, um, thank you, of course, for sharing these you know, really cool experiences, but you're also in the book that you guys can check out. The book is, of course, Bonded by Love, My Daughter in Heaven. You can find that on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And I will also turn it over now to some of the patrons. We have a lot of patrons in the uh, 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 chat today. So I'll turn it over to see if anybody has any questions for Brenda. But first, I want to mention you're watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we explore these issues. Uh, if you go down, hit that subscribe button. It really helps keep this show on the road. Also, it's made possible by viewers like you. So you can also join and join these um, uh, guest inter live guest interviews by becoming a patron at afterlifetopics.com forward slash, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, afterlifetopics.com forward slash university or patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics. And you can get involved in that, get, get involved that way, work with me and all that. All right, that being said, um, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and first turn it over to Sunday because you have a lot of questions. I think we have to maybe um, limit it down to one or two questions. Uh, so um, I'll turn it over to you Sunday. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for sharing your experiences. Um, so I guess two questions I have is, First one is, are you able to, I guess, call Ashley at will to have a conversation with her or do you have to wait for her to kind of show up to you? And the second thing is, any tips, hacks, techniques on how to have an out-of-body experience or astral projection experience from your point of view that you've had? Um, I don't 
I don't know how to have astral body experiences at will. I think maybe Cyrus would probably be able to help you more with that. I think I just go over randomly. Um, I think when I'm really upset or I'm crying a lot and I tell her I need to go over and see you, somehow I just end up there. That seems to be what's happened a few times. I'm not telling you to get yourself hysterical so you can get there. I don't really know how it happens. I, I believe that the first time I showed up in her bedroom, it was shocking to her. She has told me that they since keep me from doing that. Um, she doesn't want me just showing up in her bedroom randomly and seeing her in the middle of possibly doing anything. So they don't, they, I, I don't see that. That doesn't happen too much. Um, but in regards to the other question, um, oh, I used to be able to, as soon as I laid down to meditate, she knew what time I was going to meditate, whether it was in the morning, because I did it in the morning and I would do it in the evening. And I would feel her come right in because she'll always make my left ear itch. Uh, lately, she doesn't do it as much. There's some days where I almost feel like I'm struggling and maybe it's something that I'm doing wrong. Uh, there was one time that I did try to call her and AB. AB is the one that I also talk about in the book, and um, which is my friend's brother-in-law that passed away. And I started going, AB, AB, AB. Like somebody said to say their name three times and I said Ashley's name three times. And AB came in saying, um, can you stop shouting for my name? It's embarrassing. He was like, everybody over here can hear you when you start screaming. In my mind, he was like, he was joking. And he said, uh, you know, have you not noticed what's going on in the world right now? He was like, we're a little busy on the other side and over here. And he said, we can't always just come to you at will. You know, sometimes we're busy. So I do know that if I kind of sit down at my regular time to meditate at night, more so at night, but once in a while in the morning, she's come through. But if I sit down at night and try to do it, uh, she'll usually, if I, if I really just concentrate my thoughts on her, she'll, she'll end up coming through. And I haven't asked for anybody else recently to come through. Um, I know last night I did say to her, it's been a long time since I've heard from Shana or from Allie or Kyle, you know, mentioning the different names of people who have come through to me, the kids who have come through to me. And sometimes that'll be enough just to prompt them for them to say something. But I, I think that when they're busy, they don't come through as easily. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, um, who else wants to ask a question? If you all talk at once, I'll have to just pick somebody. Don't be shy. There's lots of you in here. If you have a question, you can go ahead and ask. I was gonna say, Brenda, I, um, you know, I like you, I didn't, I haven't lost a child, so I'm not there, but um, I read, I've read a ton of books, right, on the subjects and things like that. So when I, I said earlier that you were a little bit of a mystery because, you know, I hear little tidbits of stuff and then, you know, the sessions were over. So um, it was nice to be able to, you know, read more about what your experiences have been. Um, I gotta say, as I was reading this, um, I can, I'm getting to the point now where I can kind of tell when things are, and I don't want to make it sound like what you're saying is not real. So, you know, when I say I can tell that things are real is that I get a little emotional and, um, I'll get that, that really tingly spine feeling, you know, mm -hmm. when I read something and, um, your book gave me about five of those. So, um, and I don't get that with many other books. So, oh, um, you. Yeah, it was a it was a really good it was a good read and um, I did enjoy it. So thank you. Thank you. I know I when I was having Cyrus edit it, he told me you know it needed some sentence restructure, and I kept saying I just don't want to sound like a four year you know fourth grader. And I said I'm not an author. We had started the scholarship for Ashley, and for me that was a way for her name to to carry on, so people would know who she who she is. And, but I knew eventually the scholarship, the money and the scholarship would run out. And I wanted to find a way to, to make sure that everybody knows who she is or knows how everything has impacted or hopefully to give somebody else, whether it's a parent or just somebody who's gone through the grieving process, a way to know that our, our loved ones are real. I mean, I, I never had any kind of connection to the other side, except for when I was younger, when my father came through or I would have random dream visitations of people who came through, like when AB passed away, he came through. Um, but I never knew how real it really was. And so I know she's introduced me to a whole world of things that I'm still learning about. And I know I still have a lot more to learn, but I hope that the book will help somebody someday. And at the same time, people will get to know who Ashley is and her name will be out there forever. So I appreciate you for reading it. Thank you. Anybody else have any uh, questions for Brenda? Um, okay. Here's a question. Like, 
why is it, it seems to me that uh, this could be just a me thing or like I have tried to have contact with loved ones. It just doesn't happen. I have astral projections. I had NDEs. I've met entities. But as far as loved ones on this world goes, whether it's friends, family, anything, nothing. So do you think, and you had nothing before this, you said? The, uh, well, my father, when he passed away, came to me um, when I was young. And um, that's why I haven't really put the book on my Facebook page, because there was a couple of things that I said in there that my mom probably wouldn't be too happy with in the beginning um, in regards to my dad. Um, but he came through and he told me things about the family that nobody knew. And I would ask her about those things. And he came through for a week straight. And I've never, I've never had a visitation from him again since then. And I was about I was nine when he died. So it was probably when I was about 10 or 11 when, when he started coming through. Um, there would be various dreams that I would have, like maybe somebody in the family who had passed away that would be like a cousin or something would come to me or I would see them in a casket. They were obviously already on the other side, but I would see them in a casket. And I didn't really know why. But other than that, the only other communication one was A.B. came to me and um, he was with his guide and I could see his guide behind him and he was joking around and he was always very flirtatious and he had a, just a very big personality. And he leaned in and tried to kiss me, which I thought was just like A.B. on this side. And um, his guide was like, you're not allowed to do that. And, mm -hmm. and that I, I thought it was just a dream. And so he said, you're not allowed to do that. And he was like, you know, like whatever. And he no, no cross-dimensional flirting. <laughs> I guess not. Uh -oh. And he leaned in again. And when he did that, all of a sudden, I just saw like a flash of light as his guy grabbed him by his collar and took him away. And I've never since then, I can hear A.B., but I've never since then had a dream visitation of him. Um, his brother that night, he had gone to his brother and his brother uh, started crying. And his, that's what E.B. had told me that his brother had started crying. And he said he realized at that point his brother wasn't ready to hear him. And so he came to me when he realized that I was able to hear him in, in my sleep, I guess. So, this is pre or, or, or this is pre or post your daughter. This was pre. Okay. This was pre to Ashley leaving. After Ashley left, I could hear A.B. He would often be the... Um, I think when, when I was too upset or crying too much, I wouldn't be able to feel her. And A.B. would sort of be like the one to come in and lighten the mood to get me to maybe raise my vibration a little bit because he would come in joking around or saying things that would make me laugh because my connection to A.B., I believe it's obviously not, I, I couldn't be wrong, but I think it's because my connection to A.B. isn't as strong as my connection to Ashley. So A.B. was able to come through and lighten the mood. And once he got the mood lightened, then Ashley was able to come through and I would feel her and hear her better. All right, just, just, to, just, just to punctuate Michael's question a little bit. Um, so maybe just spitballing a little bit. Why, why do you think that someone may have a lot of astral experiences or vis visits with like entities and things you don't have a connection with, but you're not able to make a connection with deceased loved ones? It seems, seems interesting. to do. Or friends or friends. Or, or friends. Or yeah, people. From I mean, maybe that's, you know, I think everybody has the ability to do certain things. I, like with Cyrus, I think his ability is to astral travel. Maybe there's some kind of reason behind it that you're meeting with these higher beings. Maybe it's they're trying to take you on some kind of path that they're the ones who have to guide you in it in some way. Because yeah, I, would, I get I a would, feeling like they're a relative, but they're not a relative from anywhere here. Oh, like maybe it, a relative from like a past life? From just another... I mean, have you ever heard of wanderers or star seeds and stuff like that? Walking. I've heard of star seeds. Mm -hmm. So I get a feeling they're like uh, a very, very familiar. Like there's an absolute trust, no fear, and so it would be like I guess, I guess, hugging a mother or uncle or a, like a really close relative, but it is absolutely not from here. It's from some other home, and I, I'm not allowed to go there for whatever mm -hmm. reason um what i wanted to ask you before i lose it was do you think it's just that the because the, this is a thing i hear over and over with mothers is, it, is there something just just the mother daughter bond is so strong that that causes it i mean i would say in my situation because my bond with ashley is so strong i would say that that's why i can hear her the clearest but because i've heard others maybe you know like i don't hear guides a lot i heard my guide a couple of times and then i met a different guide while i was um meditating one morning and 
but normally guides don't come through for me. Um, I hear more, you know, more loved ones. So there has to be, I don't know what the reason would be for it, but I do hear more of from loved ones as opposed to guides. Well, I, I guess, I guess it is maybe a little bit of a mystery still. It seems to be a combinations of the connections someone has as well as uh, someone's innate talents, which isn't to say you cannot create a new talent. I think that you can have an, an, an innate talent that kind of comes on or you can build one from scratch. I think it takes much longer. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I think when you have to build it from scratch, whether it's mediumship or going out of body, you know, I think it, it can take a long time. Uh, but some people are lucky enough to be born with that ability. And that's, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways we could approach that. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and see if anyone else has any questions. Uh, I was just going to say how much I liked it. I, I got it um, one afternoon and then I started reading it and I ended up reading most of it all that night. I was up to like four reading it. So, no, I just, I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I even messaged Brenda. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we were messaging each other. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I forgot what time it came through, but I know that you're in a different time zone than me too, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was early. Yeah. It was probably and when I got like up, you guys thought maybe you had just started to fall asleep because I think you said it was like four something in the morning and you were still up. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be yeah. able to stay up that late. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I know. Well, I I got so engrossed in it and then I would lay down to go to sleep and then I couldn't because I was you know, enjoying reading it. And so I've kind of gone back and read, you know, some stuff again, but it's, it's just really good. Thank you. Really Thank you, Keely. Yeah. Um, does, does anyone else have any last questions here? Uh, hey, Brenda, I just have a real quick oh, one. Okay, I, we, I think we have uh, uh, Tennyson, you wanted to ask a question too, right? Oh, okay. Oh, and sorry, Barbara sorry, and uh, Diane, you were talking. Okay, so let's see, one, one at a time, who was talking first? Was it D? Were you the one talking first? I guess so. I'm not sure. It was just a real quick talking, one. Who was speaking first? I'm sorry. I'm I'm not I'm not entirely here. Today. If it was someone else, they can go first. Uh, but you, you you had a question, Dee? Yeah, I was just gonna um, say I look forward to reading your book, Brenda. And I know I've kind of, you know, it's been several years kind of following on here and interesting to, you know, hear all of uh, hear hear it more flushed out. Um, thank you for sharing that. And is your book on Amazon? It is. It's on Amazon. Um, you can get uh, the ebook, and they also have it as a paperback. Fantastic. Look forward to getting it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Tennyson, did you have your hand up or was I? Oh, yeah, I, I was going to say something really quickly. Um, yeah, feel free. Well, thanks. Uh, hi, Brendan. Thanks. I uh, really, really enjoyed listening to all of that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm just kind of backtracking just a little bit. Um, you're talking about, I think it was EB, of, apologies if I'm mispronouncing EB, it. yeah. EB, okay, thanks. And so basically when you were saying like he, I think it was him trying to come and kiss you and then there was some man pulling him back. Um, do you have any idea who that man was that was pulling him back? Was it like a higher power preventing him from going any further or do you, do you have any idea who I, that might have been? I knew it was his guide. He he didn't say it. Um, he has since referred to him. He does call him Jeeves sometimes. Um, they seem like they have a good relationship because they're always joking around. But AB had only recently crossed over when he did come to me. So I, I, from my understanding, their guides are always available to them. But in the beginning, when they first cross over, their guides are with them a lot more to show them the ropes, basically. So I do oh, believe it was okay. a guide and there must be some kind of rules as to not being allowed to do that. I mean, I'm sure that they, you know, his guide saw that I'm laying next to my fiance and AB was trying to kiss me. So he's probably like, no, 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 no that, that can't happen. But like I said, that if AB didn't do that, I, you know, it, I wouldn't, I would have probably second guessed if it was him because he does have such a, like just a huge flirtatious personality. And so that's just so common of him, even when he was here. Wow, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, did you have a question? Yes, I did. I wanted to say thank you to Brenda and Cyrus for this book. And I, I just think it's so well done. And I, um, I've been very 
uh, privilege to get to know you, Brenda, both through Scott Milligan's classes and on the Global Gathering. And um, I just, I'm just thankful that you that you did all this and that you're now giving the review of it. Thank you. Um, I did, uh, going back a little bit, I had met Barbara a while ago. She had done um, an Akashic record reading. Uh, she did one on the Helping Parents Heal, but then she also did one for me. And when we did it, I was probably in a way different mind frame then than what I am now. Um, so you had said some things even during the Akashic record reading that I thought, that's never going to happen, you know, and then in certain things did happen. So I thank you. I'm glad that, you know, I, I don't think there's any coincidences. We met because we were supposed to. So thank you also. I love hearing that. Thank you. All right. Any uh, last questions for Brenda? I haven't get, I haven't gotten to read it yet. So I'm excited. Uh, how is the book doing? Is it doing well on uh, Amazon and print? Is it doing good? Well, I think I think that's up to me to keep tabs on that, and I haven't oh. <laughs> I haven't checked the rankings lately. But um, Brenda, I got a reading list so long, I'll, but I want to I want to get to it. It sounds yeah. it sounds pretty fascinating. I mean, I I, I wondered, I'm I did sorry. wonder that too. I'm like, I don't know how many sold. I basically just go by by what people um, would tell me. Uh, you know, after they read the book, they would message me. Um, also when Cyrus and I set it up, uh, we were supposed to, well, we weren't able to do it that way, but every, everything that would come in from the book from the proceeds is also going to go to the animal shelter where Ashley used to volunteer in Bridgewater. We also adopted our cat after our two cats crossed over. Um, I went to the animal shelter one day and I found a cat named Ash and, um, I knew it wasn't a coincidence. The animal shelter was almost closed. I asked Ashley to, if, it, if it was meant to be to lead me to the right cat. And um, I went in and this cat kept trying to touch my hair and he looked just like my cat, Willie, that we used to have, but I kind of ignored him and I was getting ready to leave and he kept pushing his, poking his paw out through the, uh, the bars of the cage. And I went over to go pet his paw and I put on my glasses and when I saw his name was Ash, I said, no, this isn't a coincidence. So I took him home with me that day when normally they make you wait 24 hours. So all, she volunteered there all throughout high school. So every, like I said, everything that, they haven't sent anything yet, but when they do, all the proceeds will go right to the animal shelter, and I'll, I'll make sure I put a picture or something up without my, my, without my mom and my sister knowing what it's for, but I'll put a picture up on my Facebook so people will see that, or on the page, the, pa the patron so page. Do you find it from your mom and sister? I've missed that part. I'm not letting my, my, my sister and I don't have the best relationship in the world. There's only a few things in there about her in the beginning when I was just kind of ah. establishing my background. Okay. Um, my mom and I, she lives like five minutes from my house. Um, there's things that I talked in there about my father when he first passed away, uh, things that had come out that I was never told about, about the family. So there would be no way of me knowing those things without him telling me. So about um, your mom about, yeah, but my mom and my dad, you know, just oh. certain things that I didn't know about. Um, I was young. Like I said, when he died, they, they, gave, they diagnosed him with cancer and they gave him three months and he died exactly three months from when they diagnosed him. So it was pretty much never spoken of again. My father was never spoken of. So when I started having these dreams of him and bringing up things to my mom, she was a little angry that um, she didn't know where I was getting the information from. Uh, I have a strange family dynamic too. I understand that. Well, anyway, thank you. And I look forward to reading it. Thank you. All right. And oh yeah, thank you for reminding us about the proceeds going to animal shelter charity. So I almost forgot to mention that. So, uh, so that is true. So the proceeds will go to the charity and uh, I'll be sure to check the analytics for you later when I uh, go on Amazon. That being said, um, Brenna, do you have any, any last things you want to share with uh, the audience here or is there anything else that you're up to or anything else that you're planning or want to talk about? Um, no, I just want to say thank you. I'm glad that I got to meet everybody. Um, thank you for all of you who have supported the book and, and read our story. And um, I, I, I just, I hope everybody knows that our loved ones are always there. You know, I probably would have second guessed it before, but I, I do believe that they're always there and they're always with us and until we can meet with them again. So I look forward to the day that that happens. <laughs> And um, yeah, and I think um, also more concrete proof of this being the afterlife is the, is the ongoing popularity of shopping malls. You know, it's like the 1980s again on the astral plane and 
that, that, that definitely shows we're in a different universe, right? Because uh, <laughs> they're, they're closing here and opening there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially right now. That's in, in, yeah. in LA, every indoor shopping place has been, you know, closed indefinitely. But they're all going to the mall afterlife. That's what's happening. They're all dying mall. here and they're all going up to a higher dimensional mall afterlife. <laughs> um, all right. So with that being said, I guess, I guess that's it. So you can check out Brenda's book, Bonded by Love. I'll put the link in the description down below. You can also get involved here at Afterlife Topics, uh, Afterlife Topics Metaphysics, the Facebook group, or afterlifetopics.com. You can check out some of our books like Understanding Life After Death and the Afterlife and Beyond as well. But um, thank you for watching and uh, thanks for um, staying interested in this topic and helping make stories like Brenda's possible. And I guess that's it. So Brenda, thank you for coming on and sharing with us about your story. And thank you. I guess that's it. All right. All right, everybody. That's it for now. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Right, bye, bye, everybody. everybody.